Hi, Eric Schneider for NEMC TV6 with another Community Minute. This time we got something a little bit different. We kind of stepped away from uh, the studio and we're here on site with Scott. Scott is the chainsaw artist. Scott, thanks for meeting with us. Well, thanks for having me. Yeah, you got some cool stuff here. Um, so we just kind of like to let you guys know Scott and what he does, how he does it, and uh, how it came to be. So Scott, how did you get started as the chainsaw artist? Well, you know, I used to split firewood for some side money and uh, one day a log kind of had a, a, a pig snout already on it, on a knot, and it already had the two, like the nose. So I just started playing with it, and then it intrigued me, so I researched and looked for somebody to teach, but back then there wasn't uh, anybody around willing to teach the trade. So I just uh, started doing it on my own, and pretty soon after I, uh, I got my abilities decent, I ended up in a competition, and I placed in it, so after that, uh, you know, uh, I ended up going to Japan five years ago and took fifth out of 58 international speed carvers. So, oh, that's great! And I had to, had to take win quite a few in the U.S. to to go there. So, so how long have you been doing this? 20 years now. 20 years, right? Eh? Yep. That's cool. What's the most popular carving that you do that people see and they say, "Wow, that's really cool"? Or is there one specific one? Well, eagles and bears are like your bread and butter, and, okay. and every carver will tell you that. Um, it just seems to be so popular here in Michigan. Now, when I was in Japan, it was a different story. It was dragons and Buddhas. So, and and I guess if you go in other places in the country, like mushrooms are very popular. The the morel mushroom that everybody kind of starts out with something basic and simple like that, and then work your way from there. Now, I can teach guys how to do little square bears, but to visualize movement and and the artistic ability, that's got to come from within. You know. So how many hours do you have into this one right here so far? Um, I haven't been keeping track, but I would guess about 10 hours into this right now. And that, it's about that's, halfway. That's surprising. I, th I thought it would have been a lot more than, than 10 hours. Well, thank you. So what I'd like to do is let's take a look at some of your tools and your different chainsaws, and you can kind of go over those. Okay. So uh, just hold on a minute. We'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> can I tell you a cat joke? Just kidding. Why did the girl ask the mushroom to dance? Because he was a fun guy. <laughs> what do you call a pig that knows karate? Pork chop. Why was the basketball court all wet? Why? Because the players kept dribbling all over it. <laughs> Can I tell you another one? Um, so, how does a tissue dance? Put a little buggy on it. What's Beethoven's favorite fruit? Banana. <laughs> oh. What is a boxer's favorite drink? Fruit punch. <laughs> All right, so here we are. We're going to take a look at some of Scott's tools that he uses, the tools of the trade as it is. So, Scott, uh, why don't you kind of grab one of those over here and explain to us what it's for? Okay, let me start by saying that um, I'm kind of true to being a chainsaw artist, so I stick with all chainsaw. Yes, I have other tools and I take things further if, you know, if I'm commissioned to do it, but I only compete in chainsaw only competitions. Okay. So I always start out with, especially if you got a decent sized log, you need a good blocking saw. You need something that's a little beefier with a long bar and aggressive real aggressive chain. This takes off like the big blocks you need. To. Yeah, that one gets you there quickly, eh? Yes. And then, this is just a standard saw. Um, it is a pro saw, but um, to go with a, a thinner bar and thinner chain, which you have to change the sprocket. So you do modify it. Just because, uh, you know, the most danger to carving and, and running a chainsaw is the end coming up on you, right? right. Well, the thinner the chain and the finer it is, the more it'll plunge in without running up. So that's why we go to the, now this is for getting down to where you're gonna start detailing. Okay, get you close, eh? Get you close. And then, this is a standard saw also, but the sprocket has been changed and it's a custom bar with a carbide tip that's the size of a dime. And this is a detail saw, and it's a much thinner chain even than that other one I showed you. And uh, 
You can get in places. I get in places that when people want them painted, my brother does the painting and my son, and they say, I can't get a paintbrush in there. I don't know how you got the chainsaw in there. So um, this is really a very good tool. Now, when I started out 20 years ago, they didn't have these carving bars. We stuck with all, that was probably the finest one we had. And then guys started making them, but they didn't last but a week or so because everything heats up so much. And once a company came out with that carbide tip, it, it really changed the industry. It, now it's gone from a real rustic art form to a fine art form. Now when I get to the very, very little detail on it, eyeballs and such, uh, this is the latest saw on the market. Uh, it's, this is a, a, a six inch bar on there with the, the fine chain and the different sprocket on it. And this thing you can hold with one hand, it's so light. But you can get into spots and make noses and mouths. and That's the thing about why one of the reasons I stuck with chainsaw only is if every time you pull out a Dremel tool to make an eye and you get in a competition and it's chainsaw only, you can't make an eye. So I've stuck to that. So that's pretty much the tools that I use and now Guys will take grinders, Dremel tools, chisels, you name it, you can go further with it. And there are competitions for that, and they still call it a chainsaw, or they call it an all power is what they call it, competition. Okay. But uh, I, I got out of them years ago because I just like the chainsaw as far as my tools. That's great. So uh, I, why don't you grab one of these, fire it up, and let's uh, get some shots of you doing some work. You got it. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love. Remember that to love America is to love all Americans. Because love has no labels. That's all we have for today. I want to thank Scott for inviting us over and showing us what he does. It's always great to meet a local artist. For any MCTV6, I'm Eric Steiner. We'll see you next time.